Okay, so hello, Matt. Good evening. Hello. Good, e <laughs> good evening, Chris. Good evening. This isn't uh, decoding the gurus. This is Zoom chat PM <laughs> edition, super PM edition for us, right? Late, uh, late night gurus. Late, late night gurus. Not, yeah, that's good. That's better. Ding the G. Ding the G. We're gonna we're dinging the G <laughs> late at night. <laughs> that's 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 a terrible catchphrase, but um, it's yeah. awful. So we thought we would record this to have a brief chat about uh, the the recent Dark Horse episode that Brett released about vaccines and just generally the kind of just asking questions um, approach to discussing vaccine safety. Um, and we'll record it as a little video and then attempt to upload this on the Patreon uh, just to see if it works and yep. yeah so if you're seeing this it worked it worked <laughs> that's right yeah, yeah. And, and we and we decided that it was okay to release this so yeah that's that's yeah. the other criteria because we are not able to edit what we say well let's see <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't think we can well it'll be a lot of work to edit it so i don't it'll, think we're It'll be I, like I, that Simpsons episode with the, you know, Homer and yeah. the clock changing the light. <laughs> yeah. So um, apologies I, I, for my really bad um, video as well. I, I've just bought, Chris, I just bought a very expensive um, video camera for myself. Don't, don't lie, Matt. This is, so we're in the same building. I keep Matt in the basement in this little dark box here. Um, <laughs> so he's just, it, it, he just doesn't want to admit his current circumstance. So it does look like, you know, this is a cry for help in the, the dark, <laughs> low quality camera that Matt is using. But uh, that's, that's just, yeah, his, his cap captivity box. <laughs> so, so Chris, Chris, uh, we were, um, um, ex ex I, I replied to some of your uh, tweets this evening and I just wanted to apologize for a couple of my replies, if that's okay. Um, that's always in, okay. In, 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 in one tweet, I um, uh, described um, your, um, uh, a political view of yours as believing that gypsies were all thieves and and i uh, I, I just to contrast that with my own more progressive views and i know that's not true i know i know that you don't have those feelings about gypsies so i want to and apologize not all gypsies matt i'm sure some i hear some are good people so <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> that, like, that's that that was an, a, a terrible slur but i'll i'll forgive you because of the the matthew brown <laughs> No way. <laughs> no, Matthew Smith. <laughs> <laughs> the Matthew Smith affair, which people won't understand probably because they yeah. haven't heard the episode where you called me Matthew Smith. But yes, he, on another he... another podcast, I did do that. I I miss I misnamed Matt, and, but only like for two seconds and corrected myself. So <laughs> okay. Um, oh, the by other the thing way, I want... this is what we look like, hmm. incidentally. Yeah, but I look, like, I look, I look less blurry in real life. <laughs> no, also not true. And uh, the, yeah, the, <laughs> this and and this is not a real background. <laughs> I was like, this shows yeah. this is the, the. In case that wasn't clear, Matt, just in case you thought <laughs> I was outside and this is uh, dystopian Tokyo. Uh, no, this is to hide my disheveled room. The, um, the other, the other thing I tweeted about you, Chris, is that I described your. I said some nice things about you, but then I. Describe your personality as um, the kind of personality that um, kicks off decades of internecine strife, bitter internecine strife, which... <laughs> look, I... that, that's what my people <laughs> have done. That's what we're famous for. Like, uh, at least decades of... And, and really centuries because the, the conflicts mm. of England go that far back, but... I and I think the majority of that is due to our attitude, really. Not, yeah, just to, not to, it, historical persecution. It's the it, it's, it's, it's the sarcastic, sarcastic tone, tone. It's the tone. That's that's where you've been going wrong all these years. Yeah. So I not only insulted you, but I also disparaged your proud uh, culture, which um, 
it's, well sorry that's mm. that's part of the course they see this is just pulling back the curtain this is all the stuff that we have to edit out where mm. matt insults ireland endlessly and we both um and ah uh, and say kind of about a million times so yeah this this, this is the real <laughs> the, the real <laughs> way that we insult each other uh, gratuitously in 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 every episode but but most of that makes it through actually to be fair. yeah yeah it's just the ums and ahs we we edit out but we leave the insults in yeah, yeah generally so so the reason i suggested this apart from to test things is that i the i generated a mild amount of controversy on twitter by summarizing Brett, Brett Weinstein and Heller Herring's oh, oh, getting more dark. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it turns out I'm completely lit by my open windows. So I'll leave those open on my screen. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> sorry, that's, sorry. That's, that's, this is this is advanced lighting. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. going to get better. It's going to get better. I'm going to use some of the Patreon spoils. No, actually, I'm going to spend my own money on uh, because I'm going to use it for work as well uh, on the camera. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm. So the uh sorry, yeah. I completely spoiled your thing. You have to start again maybe a little bit. Sorry uh, everyone. Yeah, that's terrible, terrible. Um, <sighs> but I uh, yeah, so I think the reason I caused trouble um was because it, I think it's because at the start of the tweet I said this is basically an anti-vax episode. It's framed as a realistic assessment of risks, but it's mostly speculative fear mongering with Heller and Brett arguing that experts aren't properly acknowledging the risks or considering long term harms. And this is like their episode of vaccine like no other. So I, I think the part of the reason it annoyed a lot of their fans and whatnot is that because it said anti vax, right? And they re regard that as like a uh, slur, a disparaging slur, right? Which, mm. Which it is, <laughs> but, mm, yeah. <laughs> but, but I, but I think justified because I like I, I wouldn't. The reason I, like so people took it when I said this is basically as being I don't know apparently that's some formulation that people so say you know like this is basically a fascist takeover or something like that. But mm. but what I had actually meant was like it's it's not exactly anti-vax sentiment it's more just like kind of parallels talking points because they're they're doing that thing which they've done which they do repeatedly and which like many many of the people that we cover do where they basically say that they are not doing something like and then they do it like and so you've before compared it to the the meme with the alien guy saying i'm not saying it's aliens but it was aliens <laughs> like and and that's what it is but except a kind of much more sophisticated and erudite version of it where i'm not saying like the one that we i think we both listened to before was when they covered the coronavirus um like origin conspiracies and or, or like the you know lab release hypothesis and they basically said we're not just saying that it's definitely a lab release and that the virologists are covering it up or there's some sort of conspiracy. And then that is exactly what they said for the next like one hour. They, they, they went into the motivations of how virologists are trying to cover their backs and how the, uh, like, it, it, and Brett put the probability of a lab release at over 90 percent so yeah. but it, but it, but it was couched in the we are not you know we're not saying that we're just throwing out things and this this struck me as like the exact same thing where they're saying you know we're, we're not disparaging the vaccine we're we're not we don't want to make people afraid or unwarranted fears but we just want to describe how no one knows that the vaccine is actually safe and that there is huge potential on acknowledged risks. That's mm. all. That's all. Yeah, that's right. Just, just you know, just exploring the possibility that this might be the case, except it definitely is the case. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah and I feel like I feel like the 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 general motivation in all of these broadcasts seems to be to really present 
themselves as providing people with a better, more accurate view or model, as they as they say, of what's going on with something like COVID and the vac and the vaccines and everything. And I just, yeah, I, I've you know, it seems a little self serving to me. I think to yeah, yeah. I I mean, because I the main thing that I took issue with and which I've tried to explain, although admittedly I do it fairly often in a sarcastic manner, but it's, it, <laughs> it, it is that, you know, they present it as if there's nobody else willing to discuss the actual risks and, and yeah. benefits and the trade-off. And my experience of like this week in virology or, or any long form interview I've heard with, you know, virologists or public health experts is they all acknowledge the trade-off from, you know, developing a vaccine quickly and potential side effects and uh, like long-term, unknown long-term issues. But, but they do it from the perspective of a realistic appraisal of the relative threats and, yeah. and, and also expert knowledge about how vaccines are developed and, and the, you know, relative risks. And it's, but the way Heller and Brett talk about it is, is as if it's taboo to even even mm. mention that there you know are side effects to vaccines that, yeah. that this is barely covered in the mainstream and it just my experience on with the people dedicated to this topic is they're all discussing the trade-offs but they just have a realistic appraisal that you know the same way that there's uh, there's risks to paracetamol that are real and like that that can be very bad in certain circumstances but like the everybody acknowledges that there's like a big there's a long list on mm. you know on the medication yeah. and mm. and it feels to me that that's the same thing with the experts but that's not sexy to say you know yeah mm. most actually you can listen to experts and they discuss the risks and uh yeah mm. well look i mean I think I think you know a lot. It, a lot is revealed by the way they frame their discussion at the very beginning, which is they make a big deal about how they're taking a risk by even by even yeah. having this discussion. You know that they they could get censored or you know they could be and they present and they mention like they they say that oh the the authorities um, have said that the benefits outweigh the risks and of course that's what you would say if if you'd already decided to go ahead. With this program and so just the the there are very strong hints throughout that you simply cannot trust anybody in the virology community and it like you know we you know i'm not sure what to call it but it's you know there's there's a whole there's there's cast of thousands of of professionals and experts you know medical researchers and doctors um involved in something this big and the whole premise of them even weighing in on this these are two sort of general biologists with no research background and certainly no research background or very little research background and certainly no research background in virology so you have to wonder well what possible contribution do they have well the only reason that you would be taking their advice and their assessment and their model of this is that you accept their premise, which is that you cannot trust people who actually know something about it. <laughs> yeah, you cannot trust the, which, you know, uh, I find I find that just very annoying. Um, there's, a, there's a constant, like, I mean, this is a problem which exists across the intellectual dark web sphere and, and other areas as well but there's there's this conflation of expertise that like i see you know people responding to me or whatever and saying oh you're you're i actually got labeled the social psychologist so take that um by some mm -hmm. people instead of an anthropologist that uh, this time but the uh yeah like and these are biologists this is their this is their bread and butter and i, I was like no that's like it isn't by most biologists are not experts in vaccines. In fact, that's a very specific skill set and expertise. And even within that, there's a whole 
range of different expertise that people don't, you know, are not experts in every type of vaccine or every, uh, like you might have somebody who is very well informed about like the biochemistry of it and somebody else who's much more clinically focused or all these kind of things. But, but in any of those metrics, Brett and Heller are not relevant experts. They, they might have, you know, a baseline knowledge from being interested in biological systems and biologists, but the notion that they would be able to accurately parse the like vaccine literature and stuff like it just, it, I, I, yeah, it seems obvious to me why that is wrong, but it, it clearly isn't obvious to lots of other people. And the notion is that like, by raising that point, you're kind of dismissing, uh, you're kind of just defending the status quo and being unwilling to look outside the box, right? Because maybe they have a perspective that the in people don't. But the issue is, if you don't have the baseline expertise, that it's, it's kind of like you or me speculating on what the issues with uh, string yeah. theory are. Yeah, it's, it's look, it's fundamentally the same as going, well, my, my uncle uh, might have some interesting perspectives on this. Um, let's get his point of view. And you go, well, I don't want to hear what your uncle <laughs> thinks about <laughs> whatever. And you go, well, don't, you know, he, he could have some, you know, I'd be I'd, not to diminish their background, but yeah, as you're saying, they just do not have the background in this area. And it's, it's very irresponsible to be making such strong statements and they you know as as we were saying they are make that that's right they have all the caveats and they have all the all the framing but you 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 can when you listen to these the the theme is unmistakable and they do present it as we are helping our audience to make rational informed personal decisions about something like getting a vaccine that is how they frame it and and we're going to we're going to give you that and and they do that using things like like they, they got they started talking about um um anti-fragility and robustness of organs to trauma and talking about you know steel members <laughs> like <laughs> like like using using very poor general purpose kind of an analogies to um talk about something that is, is is technical and frankly far better left to people who do have expertise and know what they're talking about and it's frustrating because it's not like the information isn't out there i, I know you listen to a couple of good um mm. um 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 virology podcast chris and in, in australia we have a sort of a a, a general purpose um, a radio show that's also a podcast called The Health Report, which is uh, hosted by a guy called Dr. Norman Swan, who um, does have a very strong medical background, and he does the work um, interviewing other experts and and um, and just just basically liaising with them constantly. So he he someone like him, um, and you know, I'm sure there's you know dozens and dozens of these people, um, essentially communicators of public health, um, you know, um, doing that. Um, public education thing, or what's what's the thing that Richard Dawkins does? Public understanding of science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Science yeah, science do, science. Do, yeah, that's right. There's a lot of very good people doing a very very good job at this. And no, they're not all in the pocket of terrible biomedical pharmaceutical companies. And the the, the a point that relates to that is that Brett and Heller on their podcast have probably spent. I don't know, 20 to 30 episodes mainly dedicated to coronavirus chat, uh, like uh, the topic of the coronavirus. And and because of who they are, right, and the kind of IDW uh, connection, they've got a relatively significant audience, right? Like, you no, know, not huge, but we're um, still, still like reasonable. And in all that time, they've never had an actual expert on to interview the only person that they've had is a uh russian bio uh genetic in, uh, entrepreneur or s something who like <laughs> who the first thing he said was that he has no 
actual expertise or qualification in the area, but he made a medium post, which basically argued that the virus could have been uh, lab made. Yes. And Brett really liked it, right? But so I think he's done two two episodes with him, but actual like actual experts in the field they're, they're just not there right and he could have a discussion with them and he could even present you know well i you know i think that it's a, a lab outbreak because of this and that and they would presumably explain you know in an interpersonal way why the evidence doesn't strongly support that and instead when i have looked on twitter i saw that brett had basically went on a crusade against one of the most relevant experts, a guy called Peter Daszak or something. And, and Brett, uh, because he strongly dismisses the lab outbreak origin, Brett warns his audience that like this is a guy that can't be trusted. And, and he was actually one of the guys that the Trump administration targeted for removing funding, right? Because he was mm. working with Chinese labs, but in the completely on the specific topic of coronavirus from bat populations. And and Brett's thing is to like present him as somebody that can't be trusted and who is, you know, uh, just in it for his own motivations. But it's a guy that has spent like decades working on, you know, public health and like tracking viruses. But, it, you know, the, so that, that to me is telling because it's, it's kind of amplifying these fringe uh, voices that, that that have medium articles or that have preprints where they argue it's like a man-made virus and then never engaging or introducing their audience to somebody you know from who has expertise who's in the, the thing. who's more who's more mainstream yeah, who, 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 was, who, who was part of the 99 percent of of, yeah. of researchers yeah and and could have uh you know a reasonable discussion because there's there's plenty of them who are good at public outreach on and like i think that could uh in you know interact in a useful way but that but that's the thing to me is that that's never been even broached or like raised as a potential is is an illustration of the kind of hubris that like mm. you you would imagine that if you were going to devote that much time week in and week out to a topic, you, you might consult relevant experts. But mm. and I, yeah, yeah. So I guess the thing probably that strikes a nerve with both of us is that that um, general theme of undermining people's confidence in mainstream or orthodox sources of knowledge or information is a very common theme with the yeah. people that we cover. Hey, Chris. Yeah. And the, the, like the, I even think it would be, it would be okay or like not that much of an issue to offer the, your heterodox, uh, you know, outside the box speculations, as long as you frame them accurately, uh, like what they are and your level of relevant expertise and my take on the way that brett or eric and stuff do is like where they issue disclaimers it's really really lip service level of you know no i'm not a virologist but like uh, brett has a famous not famous but like you know well-known tweet where he said i'm i'm not a ph i'm a phd not an md and then you know goes on about his views about vaccines but that that's the level of disclaimer right like i'm not claiming to be a medical doctor but here's mm. my view and like i feel that they lean into that they do have relevant expertise that like brett's phd research which we covered on the podcast right where he thinks he's discovered a like fundamental flaw with all drug research in the u.s that this kind of insight, you know, is why he's unusually skeptical and the other people are not. But the problem with that, like, premise is that it's never actually, like, his core premise that he discovered this fundamental flaw that, you know, everyone refuses to acknowledge. It's not actually acknowledged by the rest no. of the research community. His paper is not, you know... And that that he sees that as you know the disc or whatever like suppressing, but 
the reality could be just it's not that mm. big a deal and yeah he's wrong yeah yeah as we covered in the podcast it's not substantiated so so what you're saying is essentially a lot of the lines of argument that sort of justifies this the thing that justifies the speculation or the distrust is is this experience and but this experience is then um itself is just not built on anything substantial. So it's very much like a conspiracy theory where there's an explanation for everything, but you follow the the rationales for the explanations down and they're, they're not built on anything. And that's the problem. Yes, yes. And so we talked about this before we started recording, but just to like inform the audience or anybody that doesn't uh, you know pay attention to Twitter, wise people, here um that there's there was a part in the episode where they heller started talking about uh ligands which apparently in uh biochemistry is a small molecule binding to a cell receptor but there's also a chemistry definition which is a molecule with a metal ion in the middle right so a really different thing and and somebody who has relevant expertise, a protein biochemist who follows me, you know, and listened to it, commented, kind of pointing this out, saying, look, Heller, in essence, you know, completely discredits her expertise because she's using the wrong definition. And you only would get the wrong definition for this technical term if you don't know the literature and you just Googled the and like read the first thing and like it's it feels like a minor detail but I, what i think it shows is like they don't have the requisite expertise the baseline so they they are doing things like just you know googling terms and and then but then and that's okay that's perfectly reasonable you know i google terms when i'm reading papers that are in fields i don't know that well but then what i don't do is present myself as somebody that has you know deep insight because i know what this term means like yeah. if you don't know what the term means just add, or you just looked it up then just admit that that like uh, because otherwise yeah. you that kind of thing happens yeah 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 so it's it's yeah it's a bit like lapping isn't it it's just, it's just uh, um playing playing the role of of um of a iconoclast expert who has these unique insights but you know and they're very eloquent and it sounds very nice and it sounds interesting um uh, but it's not the real thing i think and i guess that's um it, it that needs to be said by us that's our job that's what we're doing isn't it <laughs> because it, it is it is important you know these things um you know if if they're not the only people doing this kind of thing with with the internet and the, the YouTube videos, what we're doing right now, right? There's all, all kinds of people can put themselves on there. They can um, have some people who subscribe to them and listen to them and get their opinions. Smash the subscribe button. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that's right. But, you know, <laughs> with the great power <laughs> that comes with being able to do peer-to-peer -peer broadcasting comes some modicum of responsibility. And, you know, I don't like, I like, if you ever catch me giving strong advice about vaccines that runs counter or is completely dead. And, and if you ever catch me saying, don't listen to whatever, phys don't listen, don't listen to um, um, uh, physicists or don't, don't listen to chemists and don't listen to our safety um, experts, safety <laughs> experts, all these things, then please stop me, Chris, because <laughs> that would be a bad thing to do. You know, um, yeah. I like that. There was a comment. Uh, so somebody commented on Twitter, uh, uh, Philip Conway said uh, when, when I retweeted the, the point about the ligand and he said, this is a real problem with people misunderstanding academic criticism. Error rarely comes all in one go. Refutation usually requires careful explication of multiple flaws. Bullshitters are experts at spouting lots of misrepresentations, which seem minor in isolation, but add up. And it, it, it's like perfect to me that that's the thing. Like if, if we point out issues like this, it's easy for people to say, oh, come on. Like who doesn't yeah. know, you know, who doesn't get the term wrong or who doesn't make a mistake? You're, you just, you're, you don't like them. So that's why you're attacking. You're, like, you're nitpicking. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's like, no, th this reflects a pattern that is like the individual incidents, I agree, are not like that uh, kind of damning, but it's mm. the, the fact that they're just they constantly build up. That, and It's highly indicative of bullshitting, and of course they're bullshitting because it just bears repeating. They're not experts in this area. <laughs> they aren't. And there is no way to talk about it without bullshitting. Like if I tried to do, um, uh, you know, a, a talk about this, then I would have to bullshit too because you simply cannot avoid bullshitting without actually being an expert and actually having spent, uh, like be being a professional or spending 20 years in that specific field. Um, there's, there's just no way around it. In previous episodes, there's been times when Brett has said, you know, I didn't look at the virology literature until like a month ago. And then he has like super strong views on it. And you're like, I, you know, my thing is, God damn, man, like you, you should connect those two, right? You shouldn't have super strong views about the literature, which you didn't know, you know, which you had never read until very recently. And the, uh, yeah, the, it's just a, it, it, but it, it kind of speaks to a level of self-confidence and uh, like belief in your, and like the part of the reason that I find Brett and Heller, like, and, you know, I don't think they're dangerous or anything like that. I would say more, it's just like they, they're kind of giving bad heuristics, but the damage I think they do is they present themselves as this is how scientists think. This is how you scientifically approach an issue this is how you critically evaluate sources and and it's it's like a you know we i've said that in all pieces but it's, it's like a pantomime because that's not yeah. how you do uh, how you do science. it and, no. Yeah. no no I, I agree and in fact i was going to say the same thing which is i think what we're talking about at the moment is it's not like we're using these guys as an example like they they um and they're a very good example but they're an example of a very general thing. Like they, they're just, they're doing in a way what a lot of people are doing on social media, um, Facebook and Twitter and various places. Um, they're doing very casual research, doing their internet research. They're, they're misunderstanding um, or just completely ignorant of a lot of important details. And they're, they're, put, they're cobbling together some kind of model or, or theory or hypothesis, whatever you want to call it, um, some sort of narrative that sounds good to them, and they're and they're, they're convincing themselves of of it, and they're or they're convincing their friends or whatever. And you know, this is obviously rampant on social media at the moment. So, you know, they're not unusual in in doing no. this. Like the the only thing that's unusual is that, I guess they I guess one part of me feels that they really ought to know better because they do have PhDs and they they have worked in a university. And you're they giving too do... much credit to PhDs. Oh, I probably am, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, as you say, they said it's it's a matter of setting a very bad example because um, I may be giving them too much credit, but certainly people who listen to them give them full credit of expertise. But, yeah, yeah, like because even within like even within the area where you know. Brett, had, could claim some expertise like evolutionary biology or whatever as as we know from that previous episode brett's take on evolution is not mainstream it's you know amongst relevant experts he's an, a significant outlier and like i know this because he often invokes my field the like cognitive science of religion views about like the the way that religion can you know serve as a adaptive uh like mm. structure social tool and 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 the research in that area but his his take about you know explorer modes and all these kind of things they're they're not mainstream even even within his realm of expertise yeah. and yeah. and you know so so that's specific to them but on but on the point of like just asking questions and and how prevalent that is as a as an approach and a kind of justification it it's 
it's been pretty remarkable to me like the more that we've looked at some of the content we've looked at and and the more i engage with uh people that are fans of this kind of content online that how much that works as a framing method to convince that any criticism is just trying to like you know it, it's just trying to kind of maintain the status quo and shut down all legitimate criticism and like it, the bit that surprises me about it is how effective it is because i can read stuart ritchie's book right the science fiction's book which is mainly uh a a, a long illustration of the flaws of science the problems of science the things that have gone terribly wrong in recent research and and i completely agree with it i also completely agree with the open science reforms right and i have no issue with acknowledging the limitations of science the problems with science and and that we you know historical errors that science has made like thalidomide babies and all these kind of things but that isn't what they're doing and yeah. the, there's a reason that like i think Stuart ritchie stuff is good and well researched and and important and like brett and eric stuff is not yeah. and it's actually it's kind of distracting from the things that we need to do for like open science and mm. scientific reform that's the problem to me that the they present it as if the, someone like me or you are unwilling to address these like legitimate problems and criticism we just want to like defend it and dismiss that there's any you know potential mm. harms yeah but but that's no, no. not true <laughs> yeah no I, I know what you mean and it's a it's a subtle point that's hard to communicate to people because there's obviously a place for for speculation and there's yeah. obviously a place for i guess counter orthodox theories and models and in, in any field uh, of research, there's 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 heaps of both of those things. Um, you know, to just give one example um, that's relevant here, um, I, I believe it's a genuine minor mystery as to why uh, COVID hasn't spread as much as it could have where where you are, Chris, in Japan. Yeah, sure, in East Asia yeah. generally. Yeah, so it's 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 a minor mystery, and you know, there's genuine uncertainty and ambiguity there. Um, and I'd say there's a bunch of people exploring a variety of different of, of diverse hypotheses there that there is no party line there is no orthodoxy that one no. has to stick to and that is perfectly fine and 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 normal and if one wants to on twitter with your friends speculate a little bit about why that might be then by all means you know um talk about it throw some ideas around that's cool you know <laughs> um but the framing here just to remind everyone, is that the establishment doesn't want you to know or doesn't appreciate the the real story, yeah, and the dangers and just 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 the real story, right? And you know, in, in this case, it's dangers of, of of vaccination or whatever. Here's where you'll find the true thing, and they say explicitly that their model is superior to the the. The orthodox model, which is just, I mean, you cannot overstate the level of hubris there to, to say that two people who do not have, I just got to keep repeating this, two people who do not have a background in that particular topic have independently at home, hopping on the internet, figured it out, and they are giving you the listeners advice as to what to do about vaccinations that is better then um yeah I, I i hope people can see that that is not the same <laughs> as as a bit of speculation or a bit of diversity and thinking yeah one would hope but you know that's the yeah that it, it's yeah i i mean it, it's it's hard to it's it it feels sometimes I, I feel that like the the defend the criticism is you're being too mean and uncharitable uncharitable right they're just asking questions they're not presenting themselves as experts they're they're just you know having speculation and they're just willing to discuss the realistic risks that's the way that their uh, kind of supporters present that but 
that that feels to me like that people are not really appreciating the message that is generated by their yeah. content right it's it's like it's focusing on the disclaimers and the you know like Brett, Brett's famous tweet which i referenced earlier has like this you know so i'll just read it because it's quite short i'm a phd <laughs> not an md i believe vaccines are among the greatest human inventions discovered in multiple cultures and contributing massively to human well-being my kids are vaccinated okay so stop there up to there that's a very reasonable sentiment in fact it's it's a ringing endorsement or vaccines right and their importance for society but the final line is but i don't believe vaccines are safe or that we fully understand the risks hashtag doctors speak up which was like a hashtag that were doctors were using to promote like uh, to get people to uh, support vaccine safety and this the point to note here is that this was before anything to do with like coronavirus or new vaccines being developed this was brett's stance on vaccines like just the the vaccines which we have good information on about safety and uh, long-term effects and these kind of things mm. and that bit at the end so in, in some of the tweet responses i've got you know people have been saying well what's the what's the issue like he completely in, endorses the importance of vaccines and it's like yeah but did you read the last line because that undermines the message that came before dramatically it's it's mm -hmm. it, and and then you know the analogy people draw is like well well cars are not entirely safe but we acknowledge that and like people don't say you're anti-car and I, I feel like yeah but people don't don't talk about the like the dangers of cars and stuff in the way that brett is about vaccines right he's not saying i'll use a car but i don't think cars are safe or that we really appreciate the risk every time we mm. drive a car because like then people would be like well no everybody knows you can have accidents and the like that you know there's there's dangers associated with driving a car same with driving a plane like if brett was stopping everybody before they get on the plane and saying no this flight is probably safe but <laughs> we we don't we we haven't acknowledged that you know there can be mechanical errors on planes or there can be pilots who are depressed who may you know drive into mountains yeah. and i i yeah. just want to acknowledge the risk but that yeah. isn't I, I i know what you're saying which is that like you can always you can always take an almost sort of autistic interpretation of high this decoupling. Uh, high high de <laughs> ultra high decoupling and you know it's like getting on a plane and the pilot saying now passengers we don't know for sure that there isn't a bomb on this plane and he'd be completely correct right what what problem would you have with 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 he's that just, he's just accurately stating information like that, <laughs> what, what's the problem they, yeah he knows. i know yeah and then then there's the kind of human being interpretation of language right which is that there's a lot of things implied there but you know to, to return to what you were getting at before which is what we talked about um previously chris which is that this this mode of just asking questions mm. or as it's been coined i don't know who coined this jacking off who who, I, who came up yeah i don't know who did it but i'm 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 fully on board with it i'm on board with like, it yeah. yeah 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 um so that's a similar kind of thing so theoretically from the autistic kind of point of view i'm not using it in the pejorative sense i'm just trying to describe <laughs> the sense he is, of he is he hates autistic people it comes up the yeah. episode after the <laughs> okay <laughs> um that's not true that's not true that's, that's sorry, not sarcasm just that's that's the sarcasm yes yes yeah I, i'm but i'm i'm definitely definitely You're pro okay with the autistic I'll, I'll, matt likes autistic people He's i'm okay with here i'm okay autistic with the autistic friends <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's talk about the gypsies chris what are we <laughs> no no um so this yeah so theoretically this is purely neutral yeah just asking questions yeah what's wrong with questions you know um it's good surely to explore all the options um you know if otherwise we could leave stones unturned and we might miss things right but i guess what we've realized in our 
in just consuming a lot of this content is that it's really not that the 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 just asking questions uh, approach is a very is a very functional framing of and the questions are directed in to an end to an end yeah and they are actually they are not neutral they, they don't have no val zero valence they they are a form of persuasion in themselves yeah for instance if i was asking you know what about the gypsies do we really know that they're not trying to make off with our women or <laughs> i don't know <laughs> You know, Matt, you you were using the potential like you know well established like Irish uh, like prejudice towards gypsies as a as a like thing against me, but I think you're not just <laughs> you you have established your own prejudice, not mine. So <laughs> yeah, I, um, not, um, not a real um, prejudice. I understand it's just a, an illustration. I'm just saying the with, irony is. is the irony uh, impressive um <laughs> that's a, that's a, you know digging your own grave and jumping into it that's okay uh, okay if it wasn't obvious i'm deliberately choosing stupid examples because but you know that it, it is used in those sorts of like um you know in in the context of prejudicial no, things as well yeah a hundred percent i mean we saw like tons with scott adams right tons with him it was uh, but but it's in in pretty much all of the content and and it also you know it, it's 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 at the front of my mind at the minute because like i just got barraged by people on twitter because james Lindsay and stuff retweeted the the like the the post but the when people ask you questions on twitter right it's the same thing so like somebody saying you know so why do you spend all your time on blah 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 or whatever right it's not just a question about you know how do you manage your time management right like the there's a implicit criticism and uh and like and everybody can read that very easily in their life but i feel that conspiracy theorists or like galaxy brain people or gurus they they all they've like perfected or they the good ones have got this dance down good where they do those questions which are very leading and if pushed back they'll retreat to the yeah i was the, just asking questions yeah this yeah, is just I, a, didn't, this... I didn't say there was a, mm. a like a, a vaccine or a, a virus made in a lab intentionally i just said mm. why aren't we allowed to talk about that yeah exactly so it's like a double punch i mean we've got at least two nice little techniques identified here one of them is the super duper disclaimer yeah which does an awful lot of work you it's not you, aliens it's not aliens start you lead with you lead with that but why aren't why isn't anybody talking about atlantis yeah mm. why why isn't the mainstream media talking about that um so so, so you got these two things you got the you got the um the um the sweeping disclaimers at the beginning when after which you can go on and completely do the thing that you said you you're not doing um but it's okay because you said you're not doing it so that's there um and the second one is you frame what you're doing as an open-minded exploration of potentialities conspiracy yeah, yeah. conspiracy hypothesizing chris yeah, to, 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 conspiracy to, yes to use somebody's uh bespoke terminology but brett 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 weinstein um, <laughs> yeah, just, just, just to be clear just to be clear <laughs> yeah. i often make these cryptic uh, allusions yeah. i assume everybody else you assume yeah. everyone knows but not everyone has memorized every little thing you've ever yeah. said chris so i am just helping people out here yes that's right and uh same same problem with sarcasm online right like oh that was a cutting sarcasm and they're like did anybody else get that, that was sarcastic it's a, it's a legitimate question though i think my recent tweets most people probably noticed they were fairly sarcastic um uh, I, I think everyone has that kind of fear sometimes chris like for instance when i was describing your personality is the kind of thing that starts ethnic cleansing and civil wars you know, I thought maybe what afterwards I was thinking, what if somebody, you know, does it, <laughs> do they know I'm joking? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm not, yeah, there's, there's, 
and there's some people that we know online who possibly wouldn't take that as a joke but um mm. yeah yeah i i know that's the important okay that's thing. the main thing yeah that's yeah. the main thing yeah, and, yeah so the, the, that's all right but um there's yeah so like we've went we've went like longer than we intended which is really rare because we usually <laughs> are, are very concise we and, struggle and, we struggle to make the like 30 minutes like we just we usually pat you know it's yeah there's yeah, just we're trying how do we make this longer that's what we're usually thinking it's difficult so you can see how it's hard that our podcast last for hours but the um <laughs> i did want to mention one other thing before we sign off that i i thought relates to what you were just talking about with you know the framing and thing there's this mm. concept in i don't know if it's in academia or just my neck of the woods in academia mm. um like called the shit sandwich have you ever heard of this oh yeah 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 oh yeah that's okay. that's a right. that's a thing so, yeah so and maybe this isn't just an academic thing right this might be a general thing but i think it's a general i think it's a general thing yeah okay. yeah it's good at, yeah but it's very common in academia that you put like uh pre is something nice you know this was a good paper it introduced uh you know an important topic then you <laughs> then you put your like sincere heartfelt criticism of how terrible and idiotic the methodology was and how it fundamentally can't answer the questions and then you finish by saying you know but if the authors take this feedback uh, and you know are able to revise and run some more experiments or you know whatever it is then I'd be willing to, you know, look at the another paper, and uh, I think it's an important topic. Right? <laughs> and like the way that works, uh, somewhat it does, and it does. I think psychologically is like it buffers the criticism, right? Because like you're not just an asshole, because you at least had these like two bits to start, which give people a false sense of security, and then the end, which gives them like a little bit of a you know leg up after they've been tore down, and mm -hmm. I've found that, it, that that works in so many respects. Like if you, if you, you know, respond to a talk at a conference and you praise the person who gives the question, that's a very good question, but here's why it's stupid, right? You know, not like, not that obviously, but you know, but at the end, mm. but, but I'm really glad that you asked that. It makes mm. it very hard for the people to respond back and say like, you didn't answer the question or whatever, because you praise them, even if you, mm. They'd like it's a weird it's a stupid psychological thing but i think it works and in the case of the stuff that we are talking about i think that exact frame works for disclaimers you just put the thing at the start of whatever you're saying about you know framing it as that you're just being reasonable just asking questions just you know looking through reasonable risks spend as long as you want as much detail as you want uh fear mongering or you know exaggerating risks or uh, whatever and then yep. at the end re-hit the point that look th that's all the negative things but these vaccines are important and i, I just want to say you know we're we're just like realistically talking about things we're not demonizing anything so mm. uh, just remember that when you think and like i think that works as a hook into people's mind that then when somebody else says good those guys were fear, fear mongering vaccines for an hour they're like no no didn't did, mm. didn't you hear the like the the two disclaimers but yeah but they're not disclaimers right the, so in like my my terrible analogy is like a mental hook that it, it hooks in and stays and that's the bit that people can bring back yeah. whenever they're like they hear a criticism yeah yeah there's um there's yeah that's um that those are results in cognitive science by the way so what is it recency effects and um availability uh, heuristic kind well of. kind of yeah it's it's you know if you give someone like a sequence of 10 random numbers say to, to remember then they're more likely to remember the ones at the beginning of the sequence and at the end of the sequence than the ones in the middle so there you go chris you yes, you're a social you're, you're you're a science you're a social scientist after all well done i, look, I am i'm a, a <laughs> professor of psychology I, I don't <laughs> know but um but yeah so un unless you have anything else this was fun and uh i i guess we'll try and work out how to upload it and share it and maybe people will watch or not <laughs> the real but we did do it with the so, so chris this is just let me get this straight this is patreon 
only content. Is that right? This, this yeah, is this is. I think I so, so, isn't it? I well, mean, I they just, the, we, the people who are paying us money deserve something special, right. something that's just for them. They see your RPs. They get the yep. waffle at length <laughs> about <laughs> topics, and there's probably no way to speed this up because it's a video, like the you know, unlike audio tracks. So, yeah, this is uh, I you know, my research area is on dysphoric rituals that bond you, like you do something unpleasant together, and then you feel more connected to the group. So I feel that's the model that we are pioneering with our extra content. Ah, <laughs> interesting that's an interesting interesting way to think about it yeah that's good. yeah yeah I, suffer along with us and feel more connected there I, to... yeah i you know sometimes we have to talk about that what's that dysphoric rituals for you know to build that in-group membership because uh, i was just watching some video of like the proud boys like spanking yeah. each other or something that seems like they a pretty good do it right there's like but i mean they kind of do there's a dysphoric ritual initiation but like you can do much better just for ritual initiations than that like we don't we don't we don't need to hear about your catholic upbringing there chris i mean <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Just... there is much worse things <laughs> that can be done to avoid <laughs> <laughs> no you should look up uh vanuatu land diving um this is the origins of bungee ropes but this that's pretty impressive uh mm. as a uh coming of age initiation anyway mm. cool anthropological knowledge um, there you go. Yeah, I, I am an anthropologist in, in yes. some way. Yes. Um, well, anyway, so this was fun. I enjoyed it. This was fun. Uh, like, this is probably, <laughs> like, maybe the my fourth or fifth recreational beer of this year. <laughs> that's like, that's really, literally. yeah. Oh. I just want to make you feel bad, Matt, but this is because, you know, I have young children and uh, mm. all this kind of stuff. So, I do feel very bad. I'm basically verging on alcoholism. So, yeah, I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good note to end on. So, <laughs> right on. All right. Bye. I'll hit the button. Hit the button.